Hi guys, welcome to today's video. I'm sitting here with Cat Gideon, who likes to get up in front of the camera. So if you see Gideon, just we'll just keep on going. <laughs> um, today I'm going to walk you through not just an overview, but I'm actually going to walk you through the Agent Press Pro WordPress theme. Uh, my series is designed to show a whole bunch of different themes and what we can do with them. And one of my businesses happens to be real estate, so it makes sense for me to demo a bunch of the real estate themes. So you are probably at the point where you already have a WordPress website and now you're just looking to put a theme on it, so you're in the right place. If you don't already have a WordPress and you're just now exploring, check out the links in this video below. WP Engine is one of those choices where you can actually um, sign up, build your Word, get your WordPress set up right there. You're going to manually do it, but it puts it together for you. And then you can purchase um, your studio, your studio press themes, which Agent Press Pro is a studio press theme. You can purchase that all like in a bundle. I'm going to give you some other options as well. There's a link below to Studio Press. Studio Press is one that makes the Agent Press Pro theme. And you can purchase it through Studio Press. I'm also going to give you several hosting options like Bluehost and HostGator, those kinds of things. If you decide after watching this tutorial video that you you wanted to be a do-it-yourselfer, but you just think this is going to be too challenging, my brothers over at Ballonbrands.com can help actually integrate it for you, set it all up, put all your tools in there for you. So check that out if you decide that the do-it-yourself is just going to be too challenging. When I first started with WordPress, I struggled very much with the widgets and side columns and images and headers and analytics and whatnot. But over the years of just on, you know, hands-on learning how to do it, um, it's actually become quite easy for me now today. But what I do understand is that it's not it's not easy for everybody. So if you're looking at my screen here, what you see is Agent Press Pro. And all of these themes make your website look different. Plugins add functionality and themes usually add design and sometimes they have a built-in functionality as well. And what happens though is you, you might download a theme um, or upload a theme to your WordPress. You might a uh, free theme or a paid theme and you start putting it together and you go, this doesn't look anything like what I'm looking at on the computer and that's why I want to I want to help you with that today. Free themes are only going to get you so far. There are a ton of free themes, but at some point you're probably going to end up opting for paid to get the extras, the bells and whistles. They're they're usually cleaner and and um, they have they're they're of course almost all themes nowadays are mobile responsive as is Agent Press Pro. But you'll start noticing some difference like the ability to customize a footer and things like that in free versus paid. So you might hit start off with free and then you might go to paid. I think this this seems like ninety nine ninety five or something today. Um, and again, if you bundle it or get it where, however you want to get it, you can even get it for, for less than that. But to me, I'm, I don't mind spending a hundred bucks on a nice theme. And then if you get bored, it's okay to change it later. It's, it's fine. I own a real estate business too. And I like to change it up. Sometimes I like to change the theme and it's okay to do that. You'll just have to adjust some of the functionality, but look at a theme as like a puzzle. You know, you, you buy the box, remember puzzles, <laughs> you buy the box, a puzzle, and you look at the, the, the front and it's got this gorgeous picture of the mountains and the landscape and the clouds and you open it up and it's just a bunch of jumbled pieces. Well, WordPress themes are similar to that. You have to put together the elements before it looks like it does. So they usually don't look like just out of the box. I'm here for you today to help. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a couple of key things to get to really quick. And then I'm going to start walking you through each and every element of Agent Press Pro. And what you'll find is um, the Genesis framework, which is required to make Studio Press work, and you usually get them in a bundle. Um, is, it, once you see how Genesis works, most of the themes are going to be pretty easy to lay over on top of that. Okay, so it might be foreign to you today, but at some point it becomes very easy. And Studio Press has these bundles where you can buy like all of their themes for one price, or you you can get thirty five in in the, like the WP Engine bundle, and you might want to try some different themes okay so this is what agent press pro looks like in the demo that they're giving us so you can see here they've got this image they've got a search widget 
They've got these IDX listings. They've got blog features. They've got their neighborhoods. This is all done with their headers and their homepage widgets and their footers, and I'm going to show you all that. Now, here's my version. This is I want to I want to make sure that you see how how different yet similar websites can be using the same theme. You can still very much make it look like your own website so it doesn't look like a cookie cutter like everybody else's. So here's the theme I went ahead and put this Agent Press Pro theme on my website, on my Get Real Vegas website, which is like my demo site. I put I put that on here. But you can see here instead of this couch sliding couch they have in the background, I actually have a, a functioning featured property widget through my IDX broker account. I'm going to show you how to integrate that, okay? I really like how that looks. And actually what I want to do too, let me just close a couple things in this background. When I condense this down, when I shrink this down, you'll get to see a little bit more like what it looks like on mobile. Now when you're designing your studio press, you're also going to be able to see what it looks like on a mobile, um, on a tablet, uh, on a smartphone, a tablet, and a desktop version. All of the new WordPress um, updates have this preview in it. So um, if you don't see the preview, I'll show, show, show you where it is, then you might have to just update your WordPress um, theme. Okay or update your WordPress. So here I've got my basic header and then here's my menu. We're going to talk all about those menus. And then instead of that couch that's a non-functioning slider, I actually have a widget up here um, that is one of my real estate listings that they can click through to featured property. And then when you scroll down here, I've got this little homes for sale search widget so that they can actually search for homes. And then I have a list of things to do. Now I'm in Las Vegas. so. I'm also a big time affiliate marketer. I earn six figures a year in affiliate income. Basically what that is, is I talk about a service or product or I blog about it or I teach about it and somebody clicks through and makes a purchase, then I benefit. For example, the links I told you about earlier in this video, the Studio Press, the WP Engine, the Bluehost, the HostGator, I have a relationship with every single one of those um, software developers and when somebody makes a purchase through one of my links then I receive a commission that's called affiliate marketing and it's actually genius I mean that in 2019 if you can blog if you can build websites if you can create content there's a whole world out there for you you may not even know exists so on my I'm in Vegas so Vegas is of course a huge tourist um, place and and even here in Vegas where everybody's always out doing stuff right we've got hotels and casinos and roller coasters and escape rooms and the best buffets and shows and um, all of that and so I like to include things on my real estate website that also feature things to do in Las Vegas okay and then I've got my search widget I've got my featured blogs and I've got my author section, which we'll talk about. And then I've got a search and a category box. So it looks really good on mobile. And then you can see here on desktop. So it's, it's similar. Like on, on the Age of Press Pro theme, you can see here, there, here's their blogs. They did these here, one, two, three, four. And I did mine just with images. That's all easy, easy options to change, okay? I don't have those big neighborhood boxes in there yet that they put down here. We could put those in. And then here's the About This Agent. You can see I have that over here. And then on the right-hand side, they have their locations, and I have a search bar and a category bar. So you're, you're working off the same theme, but we're choosing what we think is important for our website. We're choosing what, what we want to put out there for our customers. So you, it, my website looks completely different, and it's using the same theme. So you can make it look just like that, or you can... You can customize it and make it look like your own. And then we will actually also go into our side columns, um, getting married in Las Vegas. You're going to be able to choose whether you want a wide theme or do you want um, uh, columns on each side? Do you want a column on the left? Do you want a column on the right? So in my case, I'm using a um, content and then a right-hand column. OK, but you can actually choose to make this wide theme and you can do it by page. So you could have a wide theme by default and then just add the side column 
where you want it. Okay, it's all up to you. That these themes are so so customizable to you and what you like. Okay, I just put this together just the other day. So um, I'm going to be changing the same website multiple times as we showcase all of our themes. So you'll be able to see what you like and and what you don't like. All right, so let's go ahead first. Let me show you. Um, when you purchase your theme, you're going to have access here to this um, tutorial um, web page that they give you. So instead of a, a, a PDF, which I think you could still get all of that, from right here, yeah, you can download PDF. From right here, you're actually going to be able to see here's your first steps, and it tells you how to install the theme. Okay? So what you're probably going to do is you're going to purchase the theme and then you're going to download it in a zip file. Okay, and I'm sorry if you're already experienced uh, and this sounds very beginner. I just want to make sure everybody's got it. You're going to download it in a zip file and that whole zip file you're going to be uploading to your website. So I'm just going to go over here to dashboard and in the dashboard is where all of your settings and, th and appearances and plugins are. We're going to go down here to um, appearance and click themes okay so here you might see a bunch of themes in your dashboard that you've already used or you might have a selection of free themes you've also got the ability to um, go to add new and from here you can filter through free themes that are already in there or you can go ahead and upload the one you purchased so in our case this is a purchase we're going to click upload theme choose file and then you're just going to choose your agent press pro zip file and click open now i've already done mine so i'm not going to do it again then once it's there you're going to click to activate it it's going to unpack the plugin and then it'll give you any other to do's right there so for example there is an additional plugin agent press pro listings i believe it's called that it suggests you install that's free well, with that plugin, you can actually manually enter listings and then feature them like they do here, up here. But in my case, because I already have an IDX solution, I'm going to work with that. Okay, so that'll be up to you. I want to I want to be able to control putting in my own neighborhoods and putting in my own widgets and putting in featured properties. So I like to work with them independently of each other and then get them to work together. And I'll show you how I do that. I do not use an IDX plugin because it tends they tend to crash. Um, and with the way I build pages and widgets, it gets overloaded really quickly. So I like to just use the codes and I'll show you how, where I do that. Okay, so once you upload it, then you're going to go over to appearance and customize and this is where all the magic happens. Okay, You've got a couple of ways that you can actually um, work within your design. Okay, Now when you first look at this, this is going to be a plain square. You're not going to see this house. You're not going to see the any of these widgets we put all of those in and I'm going to show you right now where the each one of those elements are so that you know where to put them okay and again you can pause me and then compare and take a look at, and, and I'll show you the agent press version and I'll show you what I did so that you can see the differences um, in how you can customize it okay so you can do it all from here and this is a, this is going to allow you to make edits and see them live okay this is one way to do it. Another way to do it, and maybe you just want to change one thing here or there. Another way to do it is go down here to widgets. And this is like the developer side of your WordPress. This is like the back end code that makes, you know, so you can see kind of the, the schematic of the layout, right? So we have our header right, our primary sidebar, our secondary sidebar. These are all the elements of our home page. And then we have our um, disclaimer and our footers. This is kind of what make up the bulk of, of all of these blocks. You, if, if you would look at them in blocks, this is a block, this is a block, these are a block, this is another block, this is another block. This on the left is another block. So we're kind of playing with each one of these blocks at a time. And the widgets are what make certain things appear here. 
So we can have an image widget, we can have a text widget, we can have a code widget that makes the, the listing things function. We can have an IDX widget that makes homes appear, right? We can have a, a text with a color background here. We can have a search component. We can have our blog block. So this is, this is what we're walking through. So once you have a feel of the widgets, you can make changes here and you can drag and drop widgets in and out. So if you want to change your footer, like here's the footer right down here. See where they have the copyright and then they have the, the here, the footer. Once you get the hang of it and you go, okay, I know the footer. The footer's right here or you're using footer one and two, wherever you have your that text in there, I can just go in there and edit that text. Or I want to add a little search bar to that footer, so I'm going to drag that in here. So once you're familiar, you can do a lot with the widgets in this area here. But for now, let's go ahead and start with our design in the live edit. So we're going to go back to appearance, and we're going to go to cu customize, so that we can actually look at some of these things as they take shape. Now I want to caution you about something. When you're first putting in your images and they load, they may not look like they're in the right spot. Until you get all of your blocks in there, until you get all of your widgets in there, you might have an image that looks like it's in the wrong spot because everything hasn't pushed it up yet. So I'm, I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and put in your images as the placeholders, but you don't worry about how it looks until you, after you complete each and every element. Once they're all completed, if it looks great, you're good to go. But if the image looks like it might be the wrong size or something doesn't look right, then go back in and play with your images. There's only going to be a couple spots that you really have to worry about as far as that goes. But those often would throw me. And sometimes it's simply because I have the image sized incorrectly, which this tells us what size is, so that's going to help. Or it's because I didn't finish putting all the blocks in there and my home page doesn't have all the elements it's supposed to have, and so it looks strange, okay? All right, so let's go ahead, top down. This is going to be what you're going to see in most WordPress setups. So once you get familiar with this, it's going to be the same thing all the time. It's just the themes kind of change with their widgets and, and their basic design elements, okay? So the first thing we have here, we have the name of the theme that we're using. This is the name of my website, and this is the name of the theme we're using. The site identity spot, okay? It In the Agent Press Pro theme, it actually tells us, we're going to go right through it. So we're going to go right here with the site identity. This, this, um, the, the printout will tell, take you through each step as well. But you see here it says site identity, and then down here it actually says um, the site title is displayed in the header. The tagline is not displayed, but it actually is. So I'm not sure um, why it says that, but in, in my case it actually, you can see here that it is showing the um, it is showing that. So I'm sure there's options for both. But So your site title is going to appear right here. So if you are um, going by your name, Realtor, then that would show up here. Uh, my real estate website is Ballon Vegas, and that's kind of like the brand we're using. So I'll, 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 it might say Ballon Vegas. Also, sometimes I'll change mine. Um, that site title can play in just a little bit to search engine optimization. So if I'm really going after a particular keyword and I want to rank high in the search engines, I may change my site title for a little while to see if that makes any difference um, when I'm doing that. I get a ton of business from search engines rankings. I'm one of the top in Las Vegas almost all, uh, always, um, usually jockeying for number one or two for all of the niche long tail keywords. Of course, the standards, Las Vegas homes for sale and Las Vegas real estate are going to be locked up by Zillow and truly on realtor.com. But if you drill down into the smaller um, focuses, I have 20,000, anywhere between 10 and 20,000 top 100 ranking keywords for, um, for my Vegas website. This is just my demo one. Okay. Now, so what you're going to go ahead and do is give your site a title, and then if you want to put a tagline here, you can. So think of, think of how you market yourself as a brand. That's probably could be your website title. And then what is your slogan or your tagline? Um, you know, Lori Ballon Realtor, opening doors. I don't really like that 
logo and I don't use it. It's just an example because I know a lot of people that say opening doors to your dreams or whatnot. You could do that if you wanted to do it that way. Now down here we have something called site icon. Okay, This is what shows up in the corner up here on each one of the tabs. So you see here IDX Broker has their logo. Mine's a little greenhouse. Um, Agent Press has a little G right there. Um, actually, I think that's the, um, that might be the Studio Press logo. And then um, Site Identity has this one. And any website that you go to, you can see they all have these little site icons. They're, some, they're like little mini logos that represent their brand. So you can use your logo if you want to, or you can just set up a site icon. I'm going to show you how to do that really easily right now. We're going to go over to canva.com. Now, Canva is a, as of today, everything changes so fast. As soon as I make a video, something changes. As of today, they have free and premium options. And um, I don't know which one's free and what, which, what are premium, but I know uh, so a lot of the basics you can do for free. So check it out. Um, so I'm going to go over here to create a design. Now, if you follow along with the, with the Agent Press Pro um, instructions, it tells us right here, site icons um, should be 512 by 512. Now, this is one of the reasons why I love Canva as much as I do. We can go up here and actually create custom dimensions. 512 by 512. Create new design. Now... If you don't already have a logo, and let's just say you want to do a house, we can just go right over here to where we have our photos. And these are, they give us a whole bunch of photos for free, and then they offer us um, up some that are paid, okay? Let me go to the icons and graphics. Okay, so I'm going to type in the word house. So you can see free, 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 free. If it's not free, it will say next to it, like premium or it'll have a, a dollar amount next to it, okay? So let's say you're going with orange, you like orange, so you're gonna build an orange, um, you're gonna have an orange logo, okay? So what you're gonna do now is we're just gonna go up here and you're gonna save this as your site icon. They also call these site icons favicons or favicons. I've heard it both way, ways. There's a few other ways these phrase um, referred to as well. So favicon, site icon, okay? So then we're going to go up here and we're going to go ahead to download. I'm going to download this as a PNG image and I'm going to put it on a transparent background so that we don't see the white box in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and compress the file size and click download. Now, not all of that is important, but um, compressing your image files really is a good idea when you're working with graphics so that you're not uploading f image files that are too large that take forever for your page to load. So we want to compress those. So oftentimes JPEG is just fine. If you're working with PNG, Ping, they are really large files. You definitely want to chop them way down, compress those. So we're going to call this um, Las Vegas Real Estate website site icon for Get Real Vegas. I tend to title my um, images as key uh, keyword friendly as well, again, for search engine optimization. So if you are not worried about search engine optimization, then you don't necessarily need to worry about all that. Um, but I don't know why you wouldn't want to be, because let me tell you, ranking on the search engines is a gift that keeps on giving. All night long while I'm sleeping, while I'm on vacation, no matter what I'm doing, I'm getting leads, traffic because of search engine optimization, and it doesn't cost me any money to keep that running while it's running other than my website being up, right? My host. Okay, so there's our ping. All right, so let's go ahead over to um, back to our panel here. And now I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the image. This is what you would be looking at is nothing, a blank. So select the image, upload the file, select the file and I put mine on my desktop right there click open now on the right hand side here if you look right here under the image it'll tell you the size of the image file so 19 kilobytes is so perfect um, I would not usually want to have an image file that's larger than a few hundred kilobytes if you are seeing um, 
larger than kilobytes, if you don't see KB, you probably need to go back and compress that file because if it's if it's megabytes, it's like massive and it needs to it needs to be shrunk down. So this is perfect. Now, search engine optimization, a caption would be anything that shows up underneath that picture, anywhere that a caption is going to apply. So you could put something there, alt text. This is going to be where anybody that can't see the image, they have a, a reader of some sort that tells them what the image looks like. So this would be something like um, a small house, a small orange house with three windows and a door, has a dark roof and a chimney, and is the logo for the Las Vegas real estate website, Get Real Vegas. That's what you would type in here for your alt text, okay? And then a description is gonna be like, if that image shows up on Google Images or shows up somewhere else, what is this a description of? So I would put something like um, Las Vegas real estate website featuring things to do, um, places to go, and homes for sale. Something like that in the description, okay? I've got lots more training on search engine optimization, but I just wanna give you those quick summary now. So if you need to pause, pause the video, go back, upload the video, optimize it, and then come back over and we're gonna to go to the next step. Okay, so we've got our image in there. Let me just go back and put my green one in there for right now. Okay, that's not my real logo, logo anyway. Test site, like I said. All right, so now if you're happy with what you've done so far, you can click publish. Be very careful because that means it's live. While you're designing it, it's live to you, but nobody else sees your changes. Once you hit publish, everybody sees your changes. And you also want to be very careful about not closing this out before you save it. When you go to the, want to go to the next block, you want to click the little arrow to go to the next section, not the X. The X closes it all out. So I'm going to go back and we're going to go to the next one, which is background image. Now, in my case, I don't have a background image because I'm using, I went ahead and used the home page um, search widget here and I'm not using a background image. But if I wanted to, I would upload a 1600 by 870 image. So here, select image, and I think I do have one. Here we go, 1600 by 870, do all your optimization, choose image, and now you're going to see where it changes. Okay, so you can see my search widget right now is over the top of it, but do you see the difference? Now the background actually has an image where before it was white, so you can see that little sliding image back there. And if I were to get rid of this um, widget here, you would just see that picture of that kitchen behind it, okay? But if I don't want that there, then I can just remove it and it simply removes it. That's the beauty of this. You can go in and change all kinds of things and see what they look like um, as you're designing. Okay, so you choose what you like there. If you like to have something like the search widget, I will show you um, how we do that when we get to the widgets, okay? So now we've got our background image or we have chosen not to put one in. Now we're gonna do our header image, okay? Your header image is just gonna be a little spot up here. Um, if you look at Agent Press Pro, they just have a simple black line here and that's pretty much what I've got on mine as well. So I have no image set, but if you wanted to choose a, a, an image, you would choose that here. Certain themes, that, that header image will be in a different spot. It'll look completely different. So I tend to put these depending on the theme. How does it, how does it match up? So I'm going with just kind of a simple, plain gray box on mine. So you can play with that. Um, I don't really think this theme lends to having um, a header image up there that looks looks great. So next up, we're going to do menus. Now, menus, um, this is a menu. Contact us, homes for sale, things to do, your home value. I'm doing mine in the widgets because of the way this theme works. Watch what happens. So here's our menu. If I go to Prime Navigation and I add in my menu items before the header menu, they're going to show up up here. See this? That actually looks pretty good. So I would get rid of the, them down here and they would just be up here instead. Okay, again, I'm going to do that when we get to widgets. I'm not going to, 
So you can choose, do I want it before the header menu? Do I want it in the footer menu? And you can actually have it in multiple places, which I'll show you. Um, do I want it um, in the sidebar, like I have uh, the, the header right header, like I have? Then we're going to put that in another section. We're going to use widgets for that. So if you want your menu to be up here above, then go ahead and select before the header menu, and then you just won't put in this side menu when I do. You would just have it up here, okay? So we're going to go ahead out of there, click the little arrow back, and now we're done with that menu for now. We're going to go look at it again when we go to widgets, okay? And we're going to, uh, there's widgets here, and here's your home page settings, your theme settings, and your additional CSS. So additional CSS is going to be, if you start learning how to code and change the CSS, allows you to get much deeper into the design. You can um, really change how your IDX looks and how your website functions. So if you're, if you're, um, geeky enough that you want to get into CSS, you can do that. I'm not going to cover um, any of that today. And I personally don't do my CSS. I leave that to the developers. I just tell them what I want. They make my changes. Um, theme settings right here. You've got, this is where you'll see differences. Like your agent, Pre your theme is agent press pro, right? In this case. So we all have WordPress. We're all working off um, WordPress, but we all have different framework and different themes. So we're using the Genesis framework. We're using Agent Press Pro theme. Here's what settings you have as part of that. So it is a Google AdSense friendly theme. I personally make money on my websites running ads. So for example, my real estate website might make $500 a month because I put ads in there. Um, and there are people making thousands and thousands of months on their on their ads. Usually by that point, they go to more premium advertisers than AdSense. But th that is I, that's important to me is to have a Google AdSense um, friendly theme. Here you've got your color scheme. Okay, now my color scheme is blue. I'm all about the blue right now. So you can see like my links are blue. So it's Agent Press Blue, IDX Broker Blue. So here you could change this to gold. And you'll be able to see what that looks like. Okay, you, the, the changes are going to be subtle. You'll start seeing them. See here, your links are gold now instead of blue. And some themes, you can completely customize all that too. And then here you've got green. So choose which color scheme you want. And again, if you get into CSS, you'll be able to customize beyond that. And then you have your default, which is red, like the Agent Press Pro. So here's the demo. See how they have the red? You can do, the, if you're going to design just like them, then you're going to want to leave it red. Okay, I'm going with blue. All right, if you made any changes, you can click publish or you can go to the next line. Just don't close it without publishing it because then you're going to not have your, your changes. Okay, so you can change your color. Now here's your site layout. This is when I was talking earlier about you can have a wide theme, you can have sidebar content sidebar. You can have content sidebar or sidebar content. This is where that happens. So my website is content and primary sidebar, although each page has the option to make it wide theme if I want to. Okay. So right here, content primary sidebar. If I want to, I can change this to full width. Now you won't see a change here because the home page already is full width. You'd have to be looking at one of the blog pages to see those side columns show up, okay? So let me show you that. If we were to go to here, Getting Married in Las Vegas, we'll go ahead and look at that page so that you can see the difference between a blog that's full width, okay? So here we go. So let's do um, content primary sidebar. Let's change it to primary sidebar content. Oh. I already changed that page in, in the default is why. Let me go to another one. Hold on. I think I already set those as they have special settings in them so they, they don't match the theme. They're already set to show the sidebar. But if you don't have that, then it would look it would look wide theme. So play with these yourself. And as you're sitting here looking at one of your blog posts, you'll see it change. And then you'll be able to decide, do you want full width or do you not? Now, like if I'm showing a... 
you know, a, a list of homes for sale under 400,000 and I want to use big, or maybe I'm doing luxury and I want to do big boxes, big IDX boxes. I'm going to do a, um, only uh, three column instead of like five so that they're bigger boxes and I want it to be wide theme. I don't want the extra search on the right hand side, then I'll make those wide theme, but I'll, I'll, I can show you where you adjust those per page, okay? So that next we have breadcrumbs. Now breadcrumbs are the little things that show up up top that um, basically tell the visitor where they were. So see up here, you are here. Home page, then things to do in Las Vegas category, getting married in Las Vegas blog post. I like to use breadcrumbs. I like people to be able to click back. So if they're in the things to do in Las Vegas category and they happen to start hopping around, each one of those pages would have that things to do in Las Vegas breadcrumb up here, and that person could quickly get back to that top category. I'm a big believer in, in, in um, navigation that helps people get to and, to and fro, to and from where they go, where they want to go and where they just came from. Because a lot of us, we, we hop forward and back and forward and back. And in some cases, you'll be opening in new tabs or opening in a new window, but in other cases, we don't, and we want to we want to give them a place to get back to. It's also great for SEO to have this kind of um, um, it's not it's not a site map in itself, but it it does help Google see the path. Okay, so I'm a big fan of breadcrumbs. So you can turn those on or off up here, and you can choose what pages you want to put those on. Okay. So in my case, you can look at my settings. I always have them on posts and on pages. Um, posts and pages are usually my primary. Um, I don't want them on the home page, but in this particular case, this is a single post. So I also like it on the single post. So um, that's probably about it for me on those. Okay, now we'll go back to comments and track backs. So do you want to enable and allow people to comment on your post? Do you want them to allow a uh, comment on your pages? Do you want a, another blog to be able to um, ping this blog and, and post when it's, when it's made a reference to it? I'm gonna cover these a little bit more in depth on the regular WordPress tutorial. Um, and you can change these in your WordPress settings besides just the theme settings. So, it's up to you whether or not you want to do this right here in the theme. Okay, so do you want people to comment on your post? Yes or no. Comment on your um, pages? Yes or no. So my website um, is not really designed for that. Um, it's not that type of blog. So I usually leave mine off and then I can avoid all this spammy stuff that happens. I think um, if you're really working hard to be a thought leader and you're doing those types of posts, you want to build a following and you want to have comments on. So it's up to you. Okay. So I kind of went over all of those. So we went over um, our AdSense, what kind of theme, the color scheme. We went over site layout. We went over breadcrumbs. Yes, we got it all. Okay. And updates gives you the option to, do you want the theme to automatically scan for updates when it has updates? I always put yes. Um, and then if you want to put an email address below, they will email you and let you know when there is a new version of Genesis available, the framework that you need to update. You definitely want to keep your um, WordPress plugins always updated because otherwise you're, you're definitely vulnerable to hackers um, and you want to make sure you keep all that stuff um, updated on a regular basis. And there's some website hosts that will do that kind of stuff for you automatically as well, so you can look into that. Um, okay, so we covered our um, site identity, we covered our background image, we covered our header image, we covered our menus, we covered our theme settings. Now the two things we have left are the major components. And this is your widgets and your home page settings, okay? So it depends on which one you want to do first, but let's go ahead and look at widgets. So remember how I said your WordPress is kind of broken up into these blocks? Well, your header right is one of these blocks. This up here, I wish they had like a little dotted line around each section so you knew exactly what you were changing when you were changing it. Um, but this right here is your um, header right. Now, 
I have a navigation menu in here. Now it's kind of jogged funny right now only because I have this side column open. It doesn't look broken up like that when it's the full width. So you're gonna have, um, I'm gonna have my menu right up here. But if I didn't want that, watch what I can do. I can drop down this little arrow, navigation menu, okay? And I can change the title. I can change which menu I want to go up there, but I also could just add a widget. So watch this, add a widget. Look at all of these amazing things that you can do with your website. This is why people have all these themes that look so completely different. So you could put in text, you can put in videos, you can put in reviews, you could put in icons, you can put in RSS feed, whatever you want. Okay, now you can see here on the Agent Press Pro tutorial, let me go, let's see, we already did background image. Let me get to the um, part where they talk about the widgets. Okay, so we are all the way down here in, in widgets. And this will tell you what exactly they did. Every theme has this. So up here, Agent Press, uh, Press Pro widgets, you can see here all of the widgets and you go down to the next one. Okay, so primary sidebar, header right, we already did header right. And in their case, header right is this table of content, is the, is the menu like this. And that's what I have. Header right is that menu up here. Okay, so if you want to use that, you would do that here. Um, typically up here in the top is for your menu. You could have social icons. You could have your Facebook, YouTube, that kind of thing. You can do that all uh, right here. Um, and it is in your simple social icons, I think. Let me check. Simple social icons. Okay, so if I want to... I could add in my Facebook, my Instagram, all of those and have them display up here. So let's go ahead and do one so I can show you what it looks like. Um, let's go ahead and grab my um, YouTube, youtube.com, Ballin Vegas. So just go find your channel, not the video, you want the whole channel, there we go. Okay, and if you've got a, um, a vanity URL, you can use that or you can use the long form. It doesn't make any difference. I have both. doesn't matter. They're not going to see that anyway. So over here in my widgets, whoops, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and add this right here, YouTube URL. Okay, and now it's populating. See that little icon right there? There's the YouTube icon. Now, uh, next I could do Facebook and Twitter and they'll all start showing up here. Now, I also can change what they look like. So I could say, you know what? I want that icon to be blue. So I'm going to make that blue. If you want to get fancy, there's you can do all kinds of things with your colors here. Okay, so the next one we're going to do at Facebook and it would have the little F and then those would all line up up there and you can keep that up there if you want to. Um, you'll have a nice row of icons. You can change the size of those icons. So if I think that icon looks too small, I could go ahead and change that to whatever I want to make the icons bigger or smaller. And then if I think the if I don't want the border radius to be that big, I can change that. So there's lots of little customization you can do. If I don't want to align it right, I could put, the, um, put them in the center instead. I could align them to the left instead. So you play all with this and you go, you decide what you like as you start watching them develop, okay? And if you don't want that at all, then we will just remove that widget, no big deal, and off it goes, okay? Um, I have mine in the footer, but I often like them up top, so I can show you how I can change that in one simple drag and drop once we get to the, um, get our design elements done. Okay, so then after that, we go to primary sidebar. Okay, now this is this right here. This sidebar right here. Now theirs looks like, let me click into one of their... Let me click into where we can see a sidebar. Okay, so here's their sidebar. Big widget, blogs, testimonial. 
you can do so much with your sidebar. Now, here's what I want you to keep in mind. If the person is on a desktop, they're probably seeing your sidebar. If they're on a smartphone, they're not seeing it the same way it's displayed on the computer. They're seeing the, the, the main content, and then that sidebar usually drops down to the bottom of the page. Okay, so it's not the same. So if you think, oh, I'm somebody's going to use that sidebar, and you're getting 70% of your traffic's mobile, or 60%'s mobile, or 50, whatever it is, all of those people aren't even seeing that sidebar. So you don't rely on the sidebar as someplace you want people to go. Okay, I like the sidebar because I like how it frames the page. It's one of the reasons why I, I will use a, a sidebar in a blog. Um, but I also like to use it now for affiliate space or featured listings or other pricing. But definitely I look at my analytics and, and more of my people are on mobile than not. And so it pushes down to the bottom of the page, which is still a great look when you see how that looks, okay? Um, I don't think it'll do it when I'm in editing mode. Let me see. Yeah, no, not while we're editing. Okay, so I can show you after the fact maybe where that drops down to. So here's where you do all of this. So this right here, this featured listing, you see how it looks like a code and that looks kind of crazy? All I did is I went over to IDX Broker, okay? Now, don't panic. I'm going to go fast. Um, you can pause and watch this back. But all I do is I go over to Design and I go over to Website. I'm going to go Create a Widget. I'm going to Create New Widget. Select the type of widget. I'm going to do um, a showcase. I'm going to do a custom search, advanced search. Okay, what do I want to show in the right-hand column? So maybe I want to show like um, some kind of really gorgeous. Maybe this is a luxury website. So I'm going to show luxury. So I'm going to do show only a single family home. and Or this is a high-rise site. And I only want to show high-rises. I can do all of that here. I'm going to say only show me homes that are in Las Vegas that have a minimum price of $800,000. We'll just go with that, okay? Now I go down to the bottom and I save this widget as my sidebar. Nobody sees the name of this, just you. So sidebar luxury listings. And then you choose what order do you want them to be in. I'm going to maybe I'll do my most expensive first because it's luxury. And I'm going to do a one column because it's going to be the sidebar. So I don't want them going horizontal. I want them all to be vertical. And how many listings do I want to feature up there? That could be your whole sidebar if you want. I'm going to do, let's just say, three. Um, do I want the links to open in a new window? Yes. Um, and do I want to display all results? Yes. Okay. No, not on the sidebar. So I'm going to put no. Click Build Widget. And grab this code. Okay, now let me show you how I got this widget. Let me remove that really quick. We will watch it disappear. See, it's gone. Go to add a widget, and then I use the HTML right here, custom HTML. Just click it. It puts it in there, and then you can paste your code right here, and watch. It's going to show up right there in the right sidebar. unless I did something wrong. Hold on, let me just make sure the widget's right. Let me preview it. Yeah. Okay, we'll give it a second. Maybe I have to publish it first. Um, and you could title it up here if you want. New Luxury Listings. And then click Done. Oh, it's at the bottom now. See how I know this? Right here, see custom HTML, new luxury home listings. It put it at the bottom. So it's on there, but it's down here. So you, you got to move that up. Just click, drag. See how easy that is? Click and drag. Oh, this is so easy once you get the hang of it. How beautiful is that? Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, the second one, this little widget here is being created through my affiliate program um, 
through one of the companies that have an affiliate program. That's just a custom HTML code, just like we just did with IDX Broker. The third one down here, this is a search widget. So see in their case how it's red, how they have that big red one up here. Um, I just have my IDX one. Now, again, if you're working with a developer, they can make that look fancier. If you want to get into learning CSS, you can make that look fancier. Mine's just simple in this case. On my other real estate website, it's fancy. So, you know, I, I love it fine just for this website. Plain and simple works for me. Okay, and then I have my recent post widgets, and that's right here. Okay, now I clicked this to be a fixed widget. And what that means is... This, this is a long piece of content. I do a lot of long form content, two, 3,000 words. Well, there's a long scroll there if they're on a desktop computer. So what happens is if you don't have a fixed widget, this, I'll show you, let me unfix that. This sidebar will keep scrolling and it will be white space. And then that looks bad. But if you click that bottom one to be a fixed widget, it stays put on that side bar and that looks so much better so you could have your idx widget be your fixed widget you could have a contact us you could have your picture or contact info whatever you think is important you can put down there and it just stays okay so that's that's helpful um all right so then let's go back to the disclaimer now here's your disclaimer so in my case I have copyright 2019 Vision Masters LLC, and you can see that shows up down here. Now, the reason why mine is a different color is because I've already clicked on those. Um, but here it is, copyright Vision Masters LLC. So you can see here where this shows up. I'll type in test, and you'll see it show up. So that's my little disclaimer down there. So um, you could put your... Um, realtor license, you could put whatever your broker regulations are, you could put whatever you want in there. There's no, there's nothing tells you what has to go in there, but it's a standard spot to have it be a legal disclaimer. Okay, then we have our footer one, and in my case, this is footer one. Let me go back to my um, home page here so that sidebar doesn't get in the way. Okay. So this is footer one right here. And I have my um, user profile. Okay, so I put in Lori Ballin, I put in my image. I want a large image, you can change that. Extra large, watch how big my face becomes with an extra large. Okay, not too big of a change. You can make it bigger, or smaller, but it does change the alignment a little bit. So I chose the large. And then you can choose, this is called a Gravatar, and then you can choose, do I want it on the right, do I want it on the left, okay? And then you can choose the bio if you want here. If you already have a standard author bio set up in your, as your, um, WordPress has a Gravatar, so as a user, you would put your image, you could put a, a bio, and every time you then use it in one of your themes, you can just choose it to drop it in if you're going to have the same standard bio everywhere. And let me just tell you, for search engine optimization right now, your bio matters. Google has something called EAT, and it's a rating score where they're basically rating your content. They're assigning it a quality score based on who's writing the content. So E stands for expertise, A stands for authority or authoritiveness, and T stands for trustworthy, and they want to know, are you, the, are, are you an author that should be writing articles on that topic? Well, if your bio says you are a real estate agent, blah, 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 then when you write real estate articles, Google's going to tie those together. But if you're a real estate agent and you're writing articles on um, childbirth, Google's probably going to go, yeah, that fails the expertise um, and the website is definitely not an authority on childbirth, so you're gonna get it's gonna have have a lower rating, and those rating scores go back to Google. They throw them all into the algorithm, and it helps to create a better search environment. Um, so it's really important that your bio is does um, say basically that you are an expert on here. Now remember those social icons we were talking about before. See how they show up once you're done. This is how you could put these in the top if you want instead of at the bottom, or you could put them both at the top and at the bottom. There's a drag and drop editor in the widget section after we get done with this where you can move those things around super easy, okay? So we get this done, 
And then I, I, I went ahead and typed in what I wanted this bio to say. And then down here, do I want it to go to an extended about me section so they can read about me and then they can click here and they can go to the team info, right? Right here, read more, okay? And then I have um, view my blog post because right here, checkbox, do you want to show the author archive link? And what that basically does is it adds this little view my blog post links and anywhere I've written a blog, now that shows up. Now, you might have multiple authors on your website. You might have guest bloggers. You might have a team of bloggers. So you might have one author on the front, and then you want to give them access to view, um, uh, go to the, go to learn more about the other authors or read more. And then here, they just access your blogs only. Okay, so if Jane writes a blog, you can drop Jane's bio in here on her blog, and then she can, they can click through and they can read all of Jane's blogs. Okay, there's a lot of a lot of companies that do that. Not as much with the smaller um, one person or smaller teams. Okay, so here's our simple social icons. These are what are down here. So you can see here, I chose the background color blue. Um, and there's my sizing, 36, 3, that's what these are if you want to copy mine. And I aligned them left, and I put in a blue background color, everything else is the same. And here's where you can put in all of your links. Do make sure they work, because a lot of people tend to make mistakes, like they'll put in their Twitter handle, and they'll just put at Lori Ballen underscore at Ballen Group, and they don't put the full URL in there. Um, so do make sure that these all work. You do need the full, including the HTTP or HTTPS, in the front for them to function on, on this theme, okay? So you've got Snapchat, you've got Vimeo, you've got YouTube, you've got RSS feeds, you've got phone, you've got email, all kinds of things, okay? So I can put all of that in there. Now, um, we also have footer 2, and this is footer 2 on this right sidebar. Now, in their case, their footer is this. Here's footer one, pretty much like mine, and then here's their footer two. They have all these locations in there. So you can choose what you want that little square block to be. You can put in another listing. You could put in another author. You could put in um, a list of categories, a list of blog posts, and you do that all right here, add a widget. So let's just say I say, you know what? I want a calendar of posts to be in there. So I just clicked calendar, there it is. And now this will show all of the dates that I put content up there. If I don't want it, I just simply click delete. Super easy. If I want another widget, add widget. Okay, I wanna put, um, I wanna put in my meta, my login info, so that I can log in real quick and a lot of people, so I can just put that in there. And that's super easy now to access. And I can, if I don't like where they are, I just can move them around. Let's say I want that search box at the bottom. I just click it and drag it down. Okay? So you choose what you want this all to look like. Now, the other key component we have is our home page. So we did all of that. We did our widget. Oh, we just did our home page. We just did it all. Yes, we did. Okay? So now... Basically, at this point, it should look good. It should look good. Now, let me show you after the fact, let me go ahead and click publish, where to go find that widget page again to drag things around, okay? It's the only problem with the widget page and dragging things around is it's not in real view. So you don't always know what you're moving. So I always do this. I would put my Get Real Vegas, um, here on the side page so I can see it after I move things around and I'm gonna go right here and I can say okay primary sidebar um, recent post remember the sidebar I've got those three featured luxury listings well let's just say I go you know what this 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 luxury listings I don't want it in the sidebar I want it in the footer watch this you can literally go like this and drag it to another spot on the page, another block. So now let me refresh this and you'll see where it moved. See, now it's down here. See these luxury listings? Now they're down here. So it's that simple. I'm just literally dragging it and dropping it to wherever I want it to show up. So if I decide 
in this footer too. I wish I, I think I want to add, um, okay, social icons. I want to add, let's just say the social icons that are at the bottom. Let me see, where were those at? Those were in footer, footer one right here. See this? Okay. So I can say, you know, I really want that in the top. So I'm going to grab it. I am going to move it. Now I can just duplicate it, create another one. But let's just say I want it in the only in the top. Grab it up, slide up, and I'm going to put it up there in the header right. Drop. And it's real. It's instant. It makes the change. It publishes, publishes the change immediately. So then I'm going to hit Command R. I'm going to refresh. Look, there's my social icons. Okay. Now, if I want those to align right or align left, I'm going to go in there and make those changes in the widget itself. So I can go in here and say, you know, I really don't like where, where those widgets are aligned. Let me, where's the alignment? Let me align those right and see what it does. Click done, save. There, we, have, we do have to save that widget. Now we will refresh. Ah, perfect. And let's say I don't want that get social title. I just go back in here, go up to the title, and I delete it. And again, this one I need to save. Go back in here, refresh, and now there we go. I like that better. Okay. Now, again, once you have this put together, make sure you view it in mobile. Now, in WordPress, oh, I missed it. In our appearance, if you go to customize, okay, while you're designing this, look down at the bottom left. You have your desktop view, you have a mobile view, and you have a smartphone view. So now you can see what it's going to look like. This is the mistake I see people make all the times that they don't design for mobile. And in 2019, we are in a mobile first environment. So we need to be looking at what does this menu look like? Oh, I need to show you menus too. What does this look like? What, how does this look on a mobile? Do I have too much of anything in one block because people aren't going to scroll forever and ever to get to what they want to? And then if you're happy with this, now you've got a winner. Okay. Now, one other thing I want to show you really quick is about menus. So let me just close out of there really quick. And I am going to go down, actually, right here on the left, I'm going to go to menus. Now, this opens a larger panel to um, dashboard for just your menus. Okay. Here's what I want to show you. If we look here, you can see contact us, homes for sale, things to do. See here, contact us, homes for sale, things to do, your home. To add an item to your menu, over here you have all of your pages, so you can view all, or you can search for a page, or you can look at most recent pages. We have all of our blog posts, we have custom links, and we have categories. So if you want to add anything else, let's, let's look at pages. So I say, you know what, I want them to browse by location Summerlin. Well, actually, I'm gonna, I want them to browse by location for all four of these, I'm going to add it to the menu. Okay, it drops them in. Now, let me show you what this looks like, though, because it's going to end up making a very obnoxious menu, and you don't want that. You want your key menu items to be quick and accessible, not too many. It, it looks insane. Now, what you could do, you could drop them under each other. So I could have this browse by location. You just slide this over, slide it. Now it'll be a drop down under there, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's go ahead and refresh this. So now you'll see a little arrow browse by location. See how that drops down? In a, on a mobile device, it's a little arrow, so it would be, look like this, browse by location, and now it's a drop down. That's fine. It looks obnoxious on a desktop if you get carried away with that drop down. On a mobile, it still works quite fine. This could get really crazy really quickly if you get too crazy with those, okay? So I tend to use my anchor pages as the top. You know, quick, I know everybody on my website either wants to contact me, they want to look at homes, or they want to sell a house, or maybe they want to read my blog or something like that. Put some main staples up there. Most people don't want to read your blog. 
They find your blog by doing a search for something and that's how they land on it. Most people don't go to a website looking for their blog. Okay, so I rarely have that just up in the menu unless I need a quick, I need to find it really quickly, which sometimes I do. Um, so I would put your main ones up there and then most of the people are going to find your pages through your marketing, through your advertising. So you do not need to try to put every page up here on your menu. That's going to be obscene, okay? So that's kind of how you do that. And you can do this in multiple layers. See, I could do it again. So you can drop down, drop down, drop down, drop down. And if you want to get rid of that, no big deal. Click the little arrow and remove. Okay. So, I, you know, three or four items generally up in the menu is probably going to be pretty healthy. Um, you could do a sub menu, a major menu, and then a sub menu, like one above the logo and then one below at the side right bar. Or you could do one up top and then your less important items are going to be in the sidebar, side column, or at the bottom. Um, lots of ways to do that. Okay, so that is how you are going to create your menu. Right here you have manage locations. And so with your locations, you can actually set up multiple menus because so you can say before the header menu, I want my primary navigation menu. And in the footer menu, I want something different. And you can create multiple menus. So I could create um, a new menu here. So this would be my main structure. Then I can go up here and say, you know, I really want a new menu. So I am going to go to create a new menu. This is also how you get a lot of different menus and all the sidebars that you see on a bunch of websites. So now I could call this menu name Sidebar Summerlin. Okay. So now I'm going to create a menu that every time I'm talking about the Summerlin area, Summerlin neighborhood, I am going to put in my um, anything here about Summerlin. So I'm going to drag in. Maybe I want Summerlin homes for sale, Summerlin under 200, Summerlin under 300, Summerlin under 400, or maybe I want the little neighborhoods in Summerlin. Save that menu, and then we can put that menu in the sidebar whenever we want it. We'll be able to change those, okay? And those you're going to do typically in the actual blog post itself. You'll choose the sidebar, or you can use another plugin that that has you choosing different sidebars, but we'll get into all that in another more advanced class. Um, so that's it, you guys. We just put together our theme.